I'm Mark Goldstein, president of International Research Center. So we're a small research and consulting practice based here in the Phoenix area that focuses on IT and telecom, knowledge management, little bits of biotech, nanotech, green tech, 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 tech. So we're very embedded in the uh, uh, telecom and IT communities. I'm active with the Arizona Telecom and Information Council, Arizona Technology Association, and other regional economic technology development. So I'm a consultant to the Hopi Nation, the Hopi tribe in Northeast Arizona, a small tribe population-wise, about 8,000 on the reservation and 10,000 off. Their, their land is surrounded by uh, the much more enormous Navajo Nation of a quarter million people covering four states, the Four Corner area. And the Hopis have some very rough terrain, some very old uh, dwellings. Uh, for example, the village of Old Oribe, one of their nine population centers, um, has been continually occupied since 1050 AD, almost a thousand years. That's the oldest continually occupied uh, community in North America. Old, older ones in Europe for sure, older ones established and abandoned. But as we were talking earlier, in terms of infrastructure, the uh, tribe's elders, or at least the village elders, difference there actually, will not allow the ground to be disturbed for any infrastructure, water, sewage, telephone, power. Every home, every uh, uh, family compound is entitled to have a satellite dish and cellular phones and generators and water tanks and pickup trucks, but there's no distributed utilities through there. So there is no telephone service over wireline in that community. Uh, there's some from cellular, of course. The cellular is not data capable, so that community, for example, has no broadband other than those few that have a wild blue or used satellite connectivity. My project is uh, the construction of several 200-foot towers to get signals between some of the more remote places and the nine population centers to have a comprehensive Wi-Fi mesh. Going to be some 65 nodes uh, across those nine population centers, 802.11n, both A and BG channel. The AN will largely be used for backhaul and meshing. Uh, and the BGN for delivery to businesses, consumers, government entities, and so on. So, uh, and finally, the third piece is we're building a network operations center for Hopi Telecom Inc., the phone company that the Hopi tribe owns. As we were discussing originally, uh, there was a standard commercial ILEC, uh, Century Tel, and the Hopis forced them out about a dozen years ago, used federal loans, exerted the rights of a sovereign nation to say, you're no longer entitled to be here, sell us your assets, used federal money, loans to buy those assets, and has since deployed a lot of fiber uh, and, and DSL services where they can, but wireless is meant to both be the mobility piece, allow people to be at the general store, at the restaurants, at the post office, running Wi-Fi enabled devices and enabling more homes, especially the more remote ones and disconnected ones to finally have broadband services. So this is a $2.3 million federal grant, U.S. Department of Commerce under the Economic Development Authority. None of the technology is at all startling or unusual, but what is Perhaps the most interesting is the difficulty in getting rights to deploy. Um, we've had to go to so many different kinds of entities, and there are maybe a half a dozen different kinds of property rights, and it's unusual compared to a, uh, uh, a normal city in a non-tribal area. So any particular piece of land may be owned by an individual, by that individual's family as a family, property rights, which are not really common here, 
clan, the, the family may be part of the bear clan or a corn-related clan, very important up there. The clan may own the land, the village may own the land, or the tribe may own the land. So there's at least five or six kinds of land ownership, building ownership. And then there's public rights of way, there's Arizona Department of Transportation owns some of the roads and rights of way. The power company has poles. And we're trying to use a whole mishmash of these vertical assets or opportunities across seven or eight different kinds of property ownership, each with their own challenges.